So something I get a lot of on this channel, obviously, is recommendations. I mean, every video I have is that, hey, if you like that series, you would like this one, this one, this one. Now, obviously, I can't pick all those to read, but uh, a lot of them that get recommended quite a bit, we're going to kind of talk about now. And it's going to be ones that I think that uh, are in my foreseeable future. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike, back to do some more of this uh, talking about what I'm going to read instead of what I've actually read. Now, what this is, guys, like I said, a series that get recommended to me a ton. And I mean, these are ones that pretty much is like, I've gotten the most requests for me to read that I haven't started yet. Now, the deal with this is, is I want to kind of limit it to series that I do think will be happening for the foreseeable futures, I call it, which is basically like the next fiscal year or so. So don't hold me to this because things can always change with the schedule, especially now that it's kind of like the Wild West with my TBR again. But these are 10 that I think will be kind of fitting into my schedule here within the next year. And some of them have already been planned. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. And uh, like I said, these are the most recommended. Now, obviously, I got 10 of them here. Obviously, the first one, it's kind of a cheat because I did start this the other day. But without a doubt, the series I get recommended the most I have not started yet is the Cradle series by Will White. Now, I have started book one. That's the only one on this list that I feel like I'm kind of cheating you on here. So I've, I've, I've kind of kind of started that one. But I'd already made up this list before I uh, decided to read that. But uh, yeah, this series here, I think people get uh, it misconstrued when I say that uh, this is the basically the, the series I get recommended the most since Dresden Files. Everybody automatically goes to, it's not better than Dresden Files. I, I can't say I haven't read that far to say if it's better than Dresden Files. I don't think that's what anybody's saying. I think everyone's saying it is similar in Dresden, Dresden Files and that you can fly through them and that they are quick reads, but yet they are as deep as you want to get with them. If you just kind of want to enjoy them as, you know, your popcorn flick, you can do that. If you want to really get into it and chew that meat, this is a series you can do that with. So uh, I'm not that far in it to really say anything about it, but I think this is going to be a series, unlike some of these others where I will, you know, if they're like a trilogy or something, I'm just going to kind of go through them, you know, in, in a row. Uh, with this, I think this is going to kind of be like Dresden Files was while I was working through, uh, you know, some epic fantasy series like Wheel of Time, where I would kind of use them as like, you know, hey, I got a few days before the next book starts. Hey, I can fit one of these in. These are even smaller than Dresden Files and seem to read just as quick. So, yeah, I think this will kind of be like my comfort read whenever I either need a break from something big or I've just got a few extra days Cradle is going to be it. And like I said, guys, this fandom is wild. They've sent me the first eight books in the series. And I think there's going to be 12 when it's all said and done. I think uh, 10 of them are out now. Uh, 11's about to come out. And he already has plans for a release date, I believe, for book number 12. So uh, one thing I will say is I don't want to start a bunch of crazy epic series again. But again, with a series, it looks like it's uh, really quick reads like that. And not going to be reading them all in a row. I think I'll kind of break that rule a little bit because uh, you do always kind of need that little palate cleanser series going along here. Now, another author I get recommended a ton is Bernard Cornwell. Now, I do love The Last Kingdom. But I always said, I don't know if I want to start another 13 book series, right? Well, I do happen to love the Arthurian legend. So, Warlord Chronicles, I am actually going to be reading this, guys. It's on the schedule right now for May. And I'm going to be reading all three of those, starting here with The Winter King. Uh, we got Enemy of God and Excalibur, also in that series. Uh, I haven't done a ton of historical fiction, but I've heard that Bernard Cornwell is one of the best at it. And when I talked to John Gwynn, uh, he had nothing but incredible things to say about this series. That's when I first got on my radar. And then a lot of other people, like on my Discord, have read it and said it's like one of their favorite series ever. So, uh, I'm excited to do it. Like I said, I, I love the original The Mortal Arthur. I think that's just such an incredible story. I mean, the Arthurian legend, so many things have borrowed from that. Uh, it really, it's just, it's amazing stuff. And I, I think that anyone, anytime you got an author as, as recognized as Bernard Cornwell, kind of given his take on Arthur, uh, this is going to be something that I think that I will enjoy immensely and we will find out in May. But yeah, I can't do any video about anything that has anything to do with ancient England without someone saying, well, you got to read the Warlord Chronicles. So it is going to happen. Like I said, that one is on the schedule in May. I'm going to do all three of them that month. So if you want to join me, hey, feel free. Now, the next one on here is, is kind of interesting because I had said that I was interested in reading it, but it wasn't like a high priority for 2022. But then I talked to Jake Bishop on the channel, one of my Talk About Nothings, and he really sold this series hard to me. He says, 
all the things he knows that I like. He thinks I'm going to just eat this series up. This, of course, is The Green Bone Saga by Miss Fonda Lee. Now, I have Jade City, and uh, what's book two? Is it Jade Legacy or Jade War? I can't remember which one book two is. Anyway, I haven't got the third one yet. I'm waiting for the paperback release. But uh, I, I do plan to, uh, to do this one in 2022 based off of our conversation, things that he said about it. Uh, I, I really don't know very much about it. I've heard some people compare it to kind of like... Uh, Priest of Bones by uh, by Peter Macklin, which I also haven't read. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't really know, but I think it deals with like uh, you know organized crime in a fantasy setting. So hey, that sounds really neat. Anything that gives a fresh setting is something I'm always going to be interested in giving a shot, uh, except uh, military fantasy, because I think I just burned myself out on that one. But with this, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I've heard very many people that have started it and didn't love it. And I've kind of made the joke at a time that like a couple years ago, I felt like I was the only booktuber who hadn't reviewed Chase City. So better late than never. Uh, I, I'm fine with a lot of these things now, guys. Is a I always say that I, I, I'm guilty of being one of those people who says they're going to wait for a series to be complete. I don't like to do that with a debut author because it feels like it really hurts them. But, uh, you know, if this is the place that I'm at right now, the problem with more of that is is just that I have so many other series that are complete that I kind of want to prioritize much more than I'm waiting for a series to be complete. But now that that series is complete, uh, I don't think these are those are big books. I don't know if I'll be able to do those all in a month for doing that Codex Alera read along kind of at the same time when I'm kind of looking at my schedule and, and see what I got planned. But I'm thinking like a you know, uh, we're doing two Codex Lyra books a month. So I'm thinking those two books plus a Jade uh, a Jade book in between those. So, uh, you know, those three. So just in three sequential months, I'll be doing that whole trilogy. But uh, I don't know how fast those read or anything like that, but they are uh, some big honking books there. So I think I'll be taking my time with those, but that will be happening this summer. Yes, there is going to be some science fiction on this list, guys. And yes, I do consider Star Wars under the science fiction umbrella. Now, the thing is, every time I do a Star Wars video on this channel, and I will mention that I haven't done any of the X-Wing books, people are like, oh, can you even call yourself an EU fan if you haven't done the X-Wing books? It was just always something I was always like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I need a, a series about Wedge. But obviously, that was very dumb because there's a lot more to it than that. I, it was just one of those things I just it never really gravitated towards the X-Wing series. But... I do got the first book here, which is Rogue Squadron, a book I've heard a lot about. And uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I would like to know more about, about Luke and Wedge and, and the time period that it takes place, you know, in between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. There's a big gap there, I think, that we can fill. And so, uh, yeah, I do want to get into this series. I'm not going to commit to doing, like, I think there's 11 of them. I'm not going to commit to the whole thing. But if I like it from the beginning, sure, I'll keep going. Because, look, guys, I'll be honest with you. I'm not crazy about the new Star Wars canon. If you're a frequent watcher of the channel, you know this. But I do love... Uh, what they call legends now, what I call canon. But uh, yeah, this that, this being set in that time period, I miss it. I miss it. And I've read over 60-something novels in the original EU. And so, uh, sure, I would love to fill out some of those gaps that I don't know here. So uh, yeah, I'll be doing this one later this year. And again, I think it's just a, a huge, huge amount of praise for that series from fellow fans of the original EU. The EU that matters. Next up, guys, I did read Broken Empire by Mark Lawrence, uh, Once Upon a Time. So whenever this channel was really in its infancy, uh, I, I really did like the first book. Second book, I was kind of like, ah, eh. and third book, I just kind of, I just kind of checked out. I just, I never found anything redeeming about, look, I love a, a dark character. I, I love that. I, I can follow less than savory characters. Sandan Galacta is one of my favorite fantasy characters of all time. Not a nice fellow, right? But when I was reading Broken Empire, I just I could never get into Jorg. I just thought he was a sociopath, so I could never really get into it. So it made me go ahead and shelve Mark Lawrence for a while because I had uh, the the Red Queen books as well ready to go, and I was like, it's in the same uh, it's in the same universe. I don't I don't know. Maybe that's just not for me. But the constant has been a lot of people have told me you should try Book of the Ancestor. I think that'd be more of what you were looking for. Now, I don't have a physical copy of that. I just got it on digital here. So, uh, you know, I say digital books count. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, Book of the Ancestor is one that I've heard a ton about. I think when I did my my best first lines in a series, everyone was like, where is Book of the Ancestor? Well, I haven't read it, guys. I wasn't going to put best first lines on a book that I haven't read yet. But now that I've seen that first line, yeah, it's very, very good. But I think that Mark Lawrence is... Um, He's a very interesting voice. You know, I, I do uh, follow him on Facebook and lots of the things that he talks about. Uh, and and I, I just, he seems like such a nice guy. And I want to give a more series of his a try because uh, a lot of people you know, like Mark from Slowly Read that I, that, I, that I really respect, they really have great things to say about Mark Lawrence's books. So 
I don't know. I might, if I go and I try this and I really like it, maybe then I'll go back and try Red Queen's War. You know, uh, I'm always open to saying, I never say never on these things, but I definitely think this or Impossible Times would be the best place for me to go back to. But uh, this is the one that's been the most requested. So that's the one that's going to make this list. I would love to fit that in sometime this year. So we'll see how this fall goes. Uh, you know, I'll be out of all the read-alongs. Codex Allure will be over, and I'll kind of be wide open to do whatever it is that I want to do at that point. So I might be able to get this in before the end of the year, and I would really like to do that because, uh, yeah, guys, you just can't stop recommending it to me. Next up, another one I only have the uh, the digital copy of because I'm waiting to see if they make more of those beautiful illustrated editions. I'm talking about the Live Ship Traders Trilogy by Robin Hobb. Now, I was mixed to positive on the Farseer Trilogy. I've reviewed all three of those on the channel. I really did like the first two books. The third book was a big, big miss for me. And I won't lie, I kind of got Robin Hobb on probation for me. Even though I did get told before I started that series, don't take Farseer as kind of the litmus test for what all of Roland Owens is. It's one of the weakest trilogies out of the whole series. But here's the thing, guys. I'm, I have Moby Dick PTSD. I was forced to read Moby Dick in high school. I could not stand it. And I know that's a hot take because I know a lot of people adore that book. And I just, anything nautical now, I just cannot get interested in. It's something that I've always struggled with. I was like, I look at, I love the writer of Revelations books, except for the one that took place on the ocean. It's just something about it just really doesn't click for me. If you don't love the crew of those ships, there's not exactly very many people going to be paddling on over to kind of add to that cast, right? So I've kind of been wary of live ship traders. A, a lot of people tell me there is a lot of coming of age and stuff that I really do enjoy in there. Getting point of view of some of the villains sounds like a really neat idea. So I, I think that Robin Hobbs a competent enough writer that I did get the rest of the Rumble of the Eldlings on digital. Uh, but like I said, I'm waiting to see if they continue doing those illustrated editions like they did with Farce here because they're beautiful. I'd hate to go buy paperbacks of those and then they're like, oh yeah, by the way, we're continuing with that. So I'm waiting on that. So I just got the digital ones for now. But Live Ship is one, I think, the people that love it, love it. Like they say it's the best trilogy in the whole series. And the people that don't are like, yeah, you might want to just stick to just reading the Fitz book. So uh, I, I don't know, but I would like to give that a try because uh, look, the people that I respect really have great things to say about Robin Hobb and Robin Eldings overall. Uh, there are lots of people I know that say it's their favorite fantasy series. And it's people that I align with, you know, people that I have similar views and opinions to what we want to read with. So uh, I'm willing to give that a go. Don't know exactly if it'll happen this year, but... You know, if not early 2023 or this time next year, I could definitely see myself dipping back into that universe, if for anything, to get back to Fitz and Night, Night Eyes eventually, right? Uh, next up, guys, uh, this is where we get uh, a little thicker as far as uh, when I'm going to actually do some of these. I think, without a doubt, the number one science fiction series that I get asked to read that I have not read. No, it's not Hyperion. I already did that one, but it didn't even get as many requests as this one did. Gene Wolf. Book of the New Sun is without a doubt my most requested read. And the thing is, guys, as I said, I would love to do that. I got this amazing uh, illustrated Folio Society edition from one of my patrons, Dalton. You are the man. I do appreciate you. And it, yeah, it's stunning. If any reason enough to read this series, it would be for this. Uh, but also, uh, when I talked to Christopher Rocchio, the author of Sun Eater, he could not stop talking about how great this series is. But here's the thing. This is a very heavy read. It has been told this is a very, very dense thing. So this kind of falls under there with Prince of Nothing and that I want to read it but I want to finish Malazan first because I only want to have one seriously heavy read at a time. So this one will be after I finish Malazan. This is in front of everything else that you would consider a dense heavy read. This will be in front of all those. So when I finish Malazan, it'll be this. Then maybe I'll get into Prince of Nothing. That's why I don't have Prince of Nothing by Baker on here in case you're wondering. But yes, Gene Wolf is on the radar. If anything, just to know why the fandom is just so wild about these books because they will tell me flat out, yeah, they don't make much sense, but they're amazing. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not the best sales job. But uh, yeah, obviously Gene Wolfe, a pillar of the sci-fi community. Uh, just about every modern sci-fi writer is going to talk about the influence that Gene Wolfe had on them. And that's a good enough reason for me to check it out and have this awesome, awesome Folio Society edition. Definitely does help. And going on from there, guys, next up I have Elric by Michael Moorcock. There's one I kind of always stuck away from because I never understood the reading order. No one can give me a real reading order. They told me it doesn't matter. You can read them whatever order, kind of like Conan. Other people have been like, no, that's not true at all. Now that they're releasing these uh, these official new releases of uh, what, there going to be three volumes, I think. Maybe four? Someone told me that they might be four. But it's going to be doing them all in sequential order, the way that you should read them. Uh, and it's just collecting them in a nice, handsome hardcover edition. Uh, the 
time has never been better for this. Uh, lots of things apparently have borrowed from this, but that is even up for debate. And uh, I, I'm, I've always been kind of leery because if you don't know, guys, Michael Moorcock did do this very famous essay where he basically just, you know, shrouded J.R. Tolkien and took a shit on him. And I was like, no, you know, I, I don't accept this. You know, it was hard for me to to handle. I didn't even finish reading the essay. So if I if I am being hyperbolic, that's quite possible. But that was always one of the things that kind of drove me away. Same with Philip Pullman with, uh, you know, his, his, his comments about C.S. Lewis. These are two authors I love, you know. So it was always for me like, be like, you know, like, kiss my ass. So I always kind of felt like that. But now that I've got older, I have been very much about, hey, what I say all the time, separate the art from the author, you know, and that's just kind of how I feel about it. So uh, if even if I don't really care for an author, their, their views or their opinions or whatever, it doesn't mean I'm not going to read their story. So that's why I've kind of avoided Michael Moorcock for the most part up to this point. But Elric, a story that is supposed to be very influential. And everyone tells me when you read that, you're going to see how many things you love that borrowed from that. Mm, I think that's always quite possible because, uh, as I learned when I read Beowulf, guys, everyone, everyone pulls their influences from somewhere. Look out for that video later this week. Uh, next up, uh, guys, second to last here is just going to be the cycle, not the saga. Because I said I don't want to get any more of these crazy long series. So I'm just talking about the trilogy here, and that is Rift War by Raymond Feist. This is one that has been like Eddings, where it's been on my list since I was very, very young and never really got to it. Now, this is technically four books, even though they put, uh, what, Magician and something else. I think it's... I forget what it is. Anyway, they just call it Just Magician now and release it as a double book. But uh, yeah, so three books, technically four, you know, kind of like Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. But uh, yeah, this one, just the, just the cycle, not the saga. I would like to just read this 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 trilogy and see if it is for me. But uh, yeah, it, again, another series. Uh, some people tell me that, yeah, sure, it's kind of aged or dated. I have no problems, guys, with traditional 80s fantasy. I mean, I love it. You know, I have no problems going back to it. As long as it is not just derivative of Lord of the Rings over again, then, hey, I'm all for it. I will definitely give that a try. But, uh, yeah, that's one that just kind of always has been on my list and just always seems to just kind of get hopped over by other things. So I'd like to make it a priority here uh, It probably in 2023. Uh, these last few will probably slip to there just because the, I, I do have lots of plans of stuff that going on this year. Uh, but, yeah, that's the thing about me, guys. I like to plan about a good 12 to 15 months in advance. I know that sounds crazy to some people, but I used to work in risk analysis, and that's just what we did, you know. So I apply that to everything in life. You know, I'm already planning what I'm going to do for my kids in junior high, and they're in fourth and second grade, you know. So <laughs> there we go, guys. Uh, last up, guys, this one kind of mixed on it because uh, I used to get a lot of recommendations for it, a lot of recommendations for it. And then the fourth book came out and it's been kind of a tepid reception. And I'm kind of leery about starting a series where everybody's talking about how he did, did not stick the landing. But I am so interested in reading The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. Uh, the thing with this is it's, uh, is it steampunk fantasy or something progressive fantasy? I've heard about all these progression fantasy. I think that's what somebody told me that uh, that Kratos is called. I don't know, guys. Like I said, with these subgenres, I get confused. Anyhow, again, with these things, I am always willing to try something that feels a little fresh. You know, that's what I love so much about Justice of Kings is it didn't feel like the same medieval 14th century Europe fantasy story I've read a few dozen times. So if it's doing something a little different, that's cool. But uh, I, I really don't know anything about this at all, except that it gets recommended so much. And I... I I've had viewers send me all four books now. So I know that that fan, fan base is really, really passionate. But like I said, that last book has gotten quite a mixed reaction. But uh, I never let those things decide if I'm going to read something or not. Now, if it's like overwhelmingly, yeah, negative on that last book, I'd be like, ah, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, with this one, it, it, it's mixed. It's mixed. But I'll I'll decide that for myself. But guys, those are the 10 that I think uh, that I that are the most recommended I could see me, see myself putting on the TBR within the next calendar year or so. So there we are. There are a couple of series I want to mention here because I know the comments will be blowing up with these. You get this. I recommended this all the time. Why don't you do that? I said I want to kind of keep these two short series. Now I know that sounds you know kind of like I'm being a hypocrite when I said oh I'm going to be starting this 12 book series Cradle. Those are very very short books. I know some people are going to say the same thing with this, but they are very, very long series. And I know other people say, but they're just, you know, you don't have to read them all. You can just read some of them. I am not like that. I'm not wired like that. That's why I've avoided these horse heresy books because there's a million of them, you know. So uh, the, the ones I really want to talk about here, Jernai Saga, David Gimmel. Now, really, it's not just Jernai. 
it's everybody says you like John Gwynn, you would love David Gimmel. Uh, you should definitely check out his stuff. Now, what I own is Drenai, and I think it's like 11 books. So that would be the series that I read first. And again, I don't want to start an 11 book series right now. So that's why that one kind of slipped off of here. Discworld is probably one of the most recommended book series I get on this channel. It's like 45, 47 books, guys. That's just not something I'm willing to commit to right now. And when I do something like that, I want to be able to commit to it or make it my official palate cleanser series. So that's just something I've got to kind of be in the right frame of mind to say, I am going to tackle that head on. So uh, that's why it's not on here right now, just because I don't have it in the plans right now. But sure, I am interested in reading it eventually because everyone tells me how much I love Guardians of the Galaxy that I would love Discworld. And last up, R.A. Salvatore. This is Forgotten Realms, the uh, Legend of Drizzt. I always say it wrong, so I just kind of like to play around with it again like 30 something books so uh i own the first three you know and i can see myself maybe doing just the three sometimes because uh, I, I don't know if it's like that if it's you can do trilogy 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 like you would do robin hobb or something like that not sure but again you see the number of books in these series and you're like oh you know like there's this book series i've had for years guys called the saga of recluse i can't even think of the author right now draw a blank but it's it's so many books so many books and i'm like i just I don't want to commit to another series like that. You know, I want to, I just, after the last two years, guys, of doing these long, I mean, Wheel of Time, Malazan, things like that, just, I want to get back to just doing trilogies, maybe five books at most, because it just doesn't feel like it's going to be something that's hanging over me for so long. It may not bother you as a reader. It bothers me when I feel like, oh, great, that's one more thing that I have to complete, you know? So uh, I'm trying to get back to trilogies. You know, that's why I did Goblin, that's why I did Never Night, that's why I'm going to be doing what uh, the, uh, what I just talk about? What did I just talk about? Warlord Chronicles. Thank you. Uh, Warlord Chronicles. That's why I'm going to be doing uh, what the Shatter Sea by Joe Abercrombie. I want to get back to trilogies where I can just read these in one shot and be done with it because it just feels more satisfying to me as a reader to kind of get back on track with not feeling overwhelmed by some of these long, crazy series. But guys, thank you so much for these recommendations. Some of these I would have never, ever thought about giving a try. If it wasn't for your persistence, the squeaky wheel does get the grease. So guys, what are some series that get recommended to you a lot that you are thinking about giving a try? Uh, are, they some, are they some that I've recommended to you? Hey, I love that. Drop in the comments and let me go, guys, and I will talk to you there.